Well, the temperature's dropping and you are freezing and you have to have a rental boiler. Well, today we're going to talk about heat tracing and insulating on the boiling point. Welcome to the Boiling Point. We're going to be talking with Steve Taylor today. You know it's cold outside and you're going to maybe get a rental boiler because that's typically when things go down. That's when they when break. It's freezing and the boiler goes down and you need a rental boiler. Well, we just happen to have a brand new uh, 82,500 pound per hour water tube boiler that we are testing that we just got. And I thought it'd be a great opportunity for Steve and I to talk a little bit about freeze protection and the things that you actually need to uh, insulate to make sure that this thing doesn't freeze up like a popsicle. So Steven, why don't we start with the boiler's hot. So why in the world would it freeze? Uh, anything that doesn't have water flowing through it is gonna freeze up. I mean, I've, and we've seen it happen and it happens every year. We just had one come back yesterday froze up and that, that's just, that's part of it. Uh -huh. But it, just look at it like this. Any line that doesn't have constant flow through it is gonna freeze up. Just, I could have this boiler sitting here. It's a 350 pound design boiler. I, I could have it sitting at 300 PSI and every line you see will freeze up hard as concrete when it's sitting there running because it doesn't have flow through it. So just, just look at it that way. We'll point these out, but that in the nutshell, that's it. Anything doesn't have flow, you gotta, you gotta insulate. Okay. But like the blowdown line here on the bottom, I mean, you would think that that line would not freeze up. It's hooked right to the drum. It's got 300 PSI or whatever the boiler's operating at but it will freeze up hard as concrete. You have to, and you can't just insulate it. You've got to heat trace it as well because the insulation is only good it, it, as long as it's hot. If something happens, the boiler goes down and you don't have that heat in there anymore before you can get it go, going again, whatever, it's gonna freeze up and bust. You have to, to heat trace it and insulate it as well. And let's talk a little bit about the heat tracing. We typically will use electric heat tracing on all this stuff. You can use steam heat tracing if you have a separate source for steam. So say that you have two boilers sitting side by side or you're tying into a plant that has boilers that are operating, you're just supplementing that plant. You can tie into the main steam header, come out, and, and what they'll typically do is, is run tubing around that piping, run steam through it, put a trap on the end of it, and then insulate that piping and that will work. But if this boiler is your only source of heat, you can't use steam. If it goes down in the middle of the night, in the middle of the day, whatever it is, you lose your steam source, you lose your heat tracing, everything freezes up. So you have to use electric when it's the only boiler you have. Yep. So look at the lines up here. Those, those black pipes that are coming from the top, that's for the uh, level transmitter. That all has to be heat traced and insulated. It's a dead line, what we call a dead line. It has no flow through it. It all has to be done. Same thing with the, the other line that's coming to these pressure switches. All of that has to be heat traced and insulated. The stainless steel line that's going across the front, that's feeding those pressure switches on the front and the pressure gauge. Every bit of that has to be heat traced and insulated all the way up to the controls. So the controls and everything, I mean, because obviously the boiler is running and mm -hmm. all of a sudden the control lines could just freeze. They'll freeze up and they'll give a false signal to the boiler stating that it's, it's either uh, satisfied its pressure it, and if they freeze up and they build pressure in that control it'll, it'll satisfy it and shut the boiler down or it'll it'll say that that it hasn't been satisfied when when actually the boiler pressure continues to rise and the pressure switch doesn't verify that and the boiler continue to run until you pop the relief valve so you, you've got to keep those keep those thought out why don't we walk across over here okay. the other side of the burner well, we've moved around to the other side of the burner and we actually have our water column drains. How about this? Does this need to be insulated? Yeah, same thing. Everything from the, the bottom of this valve all the way up. You have the, the water column itself up there. The top pipe up there is steam, so you don't have to worry about it. The bottom pipe all the way to the drum will have to be heat traced and insulated because, again, it's a dead line, uh, has no flow through it, so all of those have to be heat traced and insulated. Over here, um, we actually got some main power coming in, but let, let's talk about the front of the burner and uh, shelter. Here. Yeah, and, and all of these, these are all watertight, so, yeah. so we don't have to worry about water getting in them, but here's what we tell customers all the time. Yes, this is designed to operate outside. It'll sit out there and run in, in a rainstorm, but if this boiler fails and your electrician has to get into that panel and it's raining, 
he's not going to open the panel up. Yeah. Just that, that plain and simple. So at, at the very minimum, put a rain shelter over the front of this burner to keep the rain off of it. If it's going to be there for a long time, then I would go ahead and put a complete enclosure over top of it, enclose it, seal it all the way to the boiler, seal it up, put heaters in here, then you don't have to heat trace and insulate anything. Then when the operator's out here working on it, doing whatever he's doing, he's in a comfortable setting. He don't have to be out there when it's 10 below zero and wind blowing and snowing. And that's good advice. I remember uh, in New York that uh, they put those shelters on there. It yeah. Makes a, makes a big difference. Makes a big yeah. difference. Okay. Big difference. Well, why don't we walk around to the back of the boiler and check okay. that out. Well, we've moved to the back of the boiler and uh, this talk a little bit about the feed water and pretty much everything back here is something that we probably ought to insulate. Once everything, you go through that. Everything back here, it, you know, the feed water lines, if the boiler's running, you're gonna have water going through them, except when you're, you know, a low load condition, the, valve, the feed water valve will close. Um, but you still need to heat trace and insulate all that. If the boiler goes down, same issue. All this will freeze up. So this is the main feed water line coming in. Those pipes up there are going to the economizer. Same thing, all the way to the economizer, all of that needs to be heat traced and insulated. All this piping here, the bypass, because that's all dead leg piping, all the drains all the way down to this um, con configuration here. Blow down lines, same thing. It all has to be heat traced and insulated. You've got your surface blow down line on the other side. If somebody comes along and shuts that valve off, same issue, that's gonna freeze up and bust. So every line that has water in it or going through it, it should be, all of it has to be heat traced and insulated. And you're actually, why don't you talk a little bit about the insulation now of what you're actually doing. When you say heat trace, I think we everybody understands that. Yeah. What's the insulation like? The, the insulation, that, you know, we've seen them do a, do a dozen different things. Typically, it's a, it's a fiberglass wrap insulation, and most of the time, they'll put an aluminum jacket on it. If it's a real short-term job, they'll wrap it in Visqueen, which is just plastic, and wrap it in duct tape and leave it. I mean, if, if we're out here at, at midnight, two o'clock in the morning, we're not gonna wait for a contractor to come in and put aluminum uh, casing over top of that insulation. We're gonna do whatever we have to do to, to keep, it, you know, keep it warm, keep it from freezing, and that means doing whatever we have at, at hand. Most of the time, if it's gonna be there for very long, they'll go ahead and put a aluminum jacket on it, make it look nice and neat. Mm -hmm. That seals it up, that keeps the water out of the insulation so it doesn't waterlog, it just, just does a good job for them. There's times when we actually come to the site that we don't just have the boiler, but we actually have uh, maybe a, a, a mobile deaerator trailer and there's a water softener in there. Yeah. Um, Maybe just touch on that. We, it, and you have the same issue with it. Uh, the, the water coming from the plant to that mobile deaerator trailer, that water line has to be heat traced and insulated. The water line coming from the, from the deaerator to the boiler, which is what we have here. We've got a, a mobile deaerator system set up up here. And this that the line coming from it. That entire line has to be heat traced and insulated. The other thing you have to be careful of is inside that DA trailer, even though there's a heater in there, if you have sub-zero temperatures, you can, that heater is not enough to keep that, that water softener from freezing up. So take that in, into account as well. If, if you're going to be in, you know, up in North Dakota in the middle of the winter, you're going to have to do some, put some extra heat in there or heat trace and insulate, do something to overcome that, those ambient temperatures outside. We just, we just can't, don't have enough heat in there to take care of it. Now the rental's over and everything's starting to shut down. We probably get our biggest damage from yeah. that from that time. Yeah. What, there, what there, is it that they need to do to keep the damage from happening? Every valve in the unit op open it up. It doesn't matter where you think it has anything to do with it or not, open it up. These are all drain valves here to drain these lines. You got another drain valve on the other side over there that's back behind there that's hard to see. If you don't drain that, this valve is closed, that line's gonna stay full of water. It'll be froze up and busted before it gets back to our shop. Again, we just had one come back yesterday. The pumps are frozen, check valves are frozen because they didn't open all the drain valves up. In those deaerator trailers, there's probably 30 drain valves in there that have to be opened. The water softener's got all kinds of little pet cocks on it, um, and, and you just really have to go through there with a fine tooth comb. Our technicians, when they do the startup, they'll take those operators through that, say, hey, when this job is over, here's all the valves you need to open. But if that, if, if that guy's on night shift or if the, he's on vacation and somebody else is there, invariably it'll be a different person and they'll forget to open them. And then we have, have problems with, with equipment being frozen up when it gets back here. Yeah, we literally get equipment when it comes back. Sometimes, or actually when the truckers show up, they're having to 
to yeah to to, to get water out of the boiler and yeah, things we, are already broke. And they'll, they'll pull across across the scales and it's overweight. Yeah. And they can't figure out why. Well, the water's still full of water. That's why. So yeah. it, it happens all the time. So make sure that you are uh, getting all the water out of the boiler. Well, Stephen, we appreciate you stopping by. I hope that you don't have any of these problems uh, now that you know about how to insulate a boiler. And we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point. I well, hope you had a Merry Christmas and you were able to spend some time with families and loved ones. Certainly appreciate Stephen stopping by and talking with us a little bit about the heat trace and the insulation. Now some people actually ask us, why don't the boilers come with the insulation on it? Really it's a maintenance issue. Um, we have to look at those boilers when they come back, maintenance them, there's a lot of rust that happens. So it's better for the rental boiler to actually not have that insulation on it when it arrives and it is done on the job site. Well, make sure you like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you don't mind, maybe share a video, and we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.